In this chapter, we're going to be going over the natural logarithm function. So we already did the exponential function y equals e to the x. So if we take that function y equals e to the x, if you remember what it looks like, it looks like this right down here. If we take that and reflect it over the line y equals x, so if we reflect it over that line y equals x right here, we end up getting this function. And this function is called the natural logarithm function. And we write it like this right here, y equals the ln of x. So that's an L for log, that's not an I, it is ln of x. And these functions, uh, ln of x and e to the x are inverse functions, which means they have flipped xy coordinates. And here is the definition that uh, we're going to need to use this a little bit to help us solve equations. And it says that if y equals the ln of x, then x equals e to the y. So they're inverses, they're kind of like opposites and they cancel each other off. Okay, and I'll be writing that down again on the next page or two. And here are some properties of natural log. I believe we already did this. One property is that the ln of one equals zero, ln of e equals one, ln of e to the x equals x, and e to the ln of x equals x also. These two right here are called uh, the inverse properties and they essentially, you can see how they cancel each other off because they're inverses. Okay, and let's do some examples here. Let's simplify using the properties of exponents and properties of logs. First one, we have e to the ln of four plus the ln of five. So first we need to use the property that e raised up to two things being added together. We can, re we can rewrite them like this, e to the a times e to the b. And this one is going to be e to the ln of four times e to the ln of five. And the next property is that uh, the, um, the inverse property that I just mentioned on the, the other page here, e to the ln e to the ln of x equals x. So you can kind of think of, think of it like this, that e and ln cancel and we're just left with four times five. So this actually simplifies to 20. Okay, next one we have e to the ln four minus ln three. And once again, we need to do an exponent rule first. So that's gonna be e to the a minus b, we can rewrite this as e to the a divided by e to the b. So b was negative, so that one's in the denominator this time. So we can rewrite this as e to the ln of four divided by e to the ln of three. And then we can do that same property that these cancel off, and we are left with four over three. Next one's a little bit harder. We have e to the ln three plus two ln four. So same concept as that first one to start. We're gonna split it up like this. So now the tricky thing here is that this one cancels off right away and then we're just left with three. For this one though, we cannot cancel the e and the ln here because of that two out front. If you remember the power rule for logarithms, if you have something like a times the ln of b, you can rewrite this by putting that a as the exponent on b and rewrite it as the ln of b to the a power. So if we do that, that's going to be e to the ln of four squared and e and the ln cancel, that's three times four squared, four squared is 16, three times 16, we get 48. And last one for this type of example, we have ln of one over e squared. So this is another kind of tricky one. We cannot just cancel these off right away. 
we have to rewrite this first as ln of e to the negative 2. So we rewrote 1 over e to the positive 2 is just e to the negative 2. And we did that because now we can think of those, the ln of e canceling off. And we're just left with negative 2. So all we did there was just use several properties to get it simplified to just one number. And for these next two questions, we're going to be solving some equations. The first one is an exponential equation. And the second one is a logarithmic equation. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to write down the uh, definition that we used previously that we saw on the first page. If y equals the ln of x, then that means that x equals e to the y. And solving exponential equations, we first have to isolate the exponential, which means for this first one, we have to divide both sides by 5. And we get e to the x minus 3 equals 4 fifths. And now we're going to use this definition right up here. And we get x minus 3 equals the ln of 4 fifths. So notice the placement of x and y in the definition here on the right. And we just converted that from an exponential to a logarithmic equation. The reason why we did this is because now we can solve it. All we have to do is add 3 to both sides. We get x equals 3 plus ln of 4 fifths. And you could put that in the calculator if you want, get a decimal answer and round. I'm just going to leave it just like that. And next one for the logarithmic one, we're going to be using that same idea. If y equals the ln of x, then that's the same thing as x equals e to the y. And similar to what we just did, we're going to have to solve this for the log. So first we have to subtract 7 to the right, then divide both sides by 2. And now to get x by itself, we need to go from the logarithmic side to the exponential side. That's going to be x equals e to the negative 7 halves. Once again, a little messy. We could type it in the calculator, get a decimal, and round it. I'm just going to leave it just like that. All right, now one more example, and then we'll just cover one extra topic here. So an investment portfolio whose value in thousands of dollars is given by f of t equals 15e to the 0.02t plus 10e to the negative 0.060. t is the number of years since the inception of the portfolio. So t is the number of years. And then f of t is uh, dollars and thousands of dollars. And we're told that the graph has a minimum value. So we want to find that minimum value. So what that's going to mean is we need to find f prime of t and set it equal to 0 and solve for t. OK, so let's find f prime of t. For both of these two terms, it's going to be technically the chain rule that we did previously. We're going to bring out that 0 0.02 and multiply it by the same thing. And make sure that you are not thinking about this as power rule. This is not power rule. That's chain rule. You uh, take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. The inside here is the exponent, so the derivative of the exponent is 0 0.02, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And then it's the same thing for this next one. It's going to be negative 0 0.06 times 10e to the negative 0 0.06t. And let's simplify this just a little bit. 15 times 0 0.02 is 0.3. And negative 0 0.06 times 10 is negative 0.6. So 
So this is the derivative. Let's go ahead and uh, set this equal to zero now. Okay, so we go ahead and we set this equal to zero, and then we want to solve this for t. So solving this for t, it looks a little complicated here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 0 0.6, the term with the 0.6 on it, to the right, and we're going to get this. So you always need to remember that you're trying to solve this for t. In an exponential function, it's going to be easiest if you can get the exponential alone. But we have two different ones. What we could actually do right now, though, is divide both sides by e to the negative 0.06t, which doesn't look like it's going to help very much, but it will. So what we end up getting here is 0.3 times e to combine these exponents you're dividing common bases that means we can subtract the exponents so 0 0.02 t minus a negative 0 0.06 t gives us positive 0 0.08 t so that's just from the exponent rule so we actually get this right here so it looks a little bit looks a lot cleaner And next, we divide both sides by 0.3. So it's gone on the left side. 0.6 divided by 0.3 is just 2. So we get e to the 0.08t equals 2. And now we can just convert this into logarithmic form. That's 0.08t equals the ln of 2. Divide both sides by 0.08. That's ln of 2 divided by 0.08. 0, 8. And for this one, we can actually type it in the calculator uh, just because it probably actually wants years for the question, I believe. So we go ahead and plug it in, and we get about 8.66. So the minimum value for that portfolio is about 8.66 years. And we didn't have to verify. Typically, you'd want to verify that that's a minimum, set up that number line that we did previously. But since it told us it's a minimum, we don't have to actually do that. Okay, last thing here. Uh, we've been working with base e. We've been working with e to the x and ln of x. Those are the ones that we typically deal with the most in calculus. A couple other common bases that we see are base 2 and base 10. So taking a look at base 2 first, for base 2, the exponential would be 2 to the x, and the log would be log base 2 of x. And if we graph them, it's going to look similar to e to the x and ln of x. Here is 2 to the x, and here is log base 2 of x. And for the last one, for base 10, we use base 10 a lot in the real world and for other uh, applications because our number system is a base 10 number system, the decimal number system. So 10 to the x would be the exponential. Log base 10 of x, which can just be written as log of x, uh, is the logarithmic function. Those are inverses of each other, and once again, they look pretty similar to the other ones. There is 10 to the x, and there is log base 10 of x. So for now, not really going to do anything with them, just going to mention them and move on to the next section.